Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Cutting threads is a pretty necessary part of making anything out of metal. You can cut down and dirty threads pretty easily, but I'm finding as I try to make things more and more accurate, I'm looking for ways to make things fit better and cutting straighter threads is part of that. So today, I'm going to see if I can make a tailstock die holder for the lathe. It's a pretty simple design, but it has a few little challenges for me in the construction, and with a little effort, I'm sure we can make something cool. Now I've struggled through with cheap carbon steel dies for a while, and it's no fun. They can't cut steel, they just kind of mush everything. So I've finally got my hands on a small high speed steel set. I guess I can't blame them anymore. I really need to learn single point thread cutting on the lathe. It's something that I'll be trying to tackle in the near future. But for what I can tell as someone who knows very little about these things, it isn't necessarily the answer for really small thread cutting. And as someone who doesn't have a thread cutting gearbox on their lathe, changing the gears around is a whole thing every time you need a little thread. So I guess my laziness also justifies the need for die cutting. To get this one started, I want to make a holder to hold the holder. I could turn this one down to fit into a drill chuck, but I want to have a go at cutting a Morse taper. So I'll start by reducing some medium carbon steel at the end of the arbor that will fit inside the holder. Nothing much exciting here, just need to make the end of this one round. Then I'll flip it in the three jaw, and as someone who's only learning by doing, I'm surprised how close to round I managed to get the part with the three jaw, with a little fluffing around. Then a center drill for some tail support, lock in the live center, and get to cutting this taper. Tapers are a whole nother thing I'd like to make a video on, and this is my first go, so be gentle. I've set my compound angle based off a different taper I have lying around, and dialed it in with the angle on the compound. I should have taken the time to figure out attaching my drill to the compound slide for this cut. Apparently, I didn't have the right socket lying around here to attach it to my drill, which I'm sure would have made this surface finish a lot cleaner, but such is life. Then I'll cut a little reduced area to make sure it fits far enough inside the tailstock. Give it a clean with a file and I can see how this fits. Not gonna lie, I was pretty worried about getting this right, but what could possibly go wrong? Excuse my gloves. I look like an extra from Grey's Anatomy, but I can't imagine getting layout fluid off my hands is going to be fun. Well it's grabbed enough that if I wind the tailstock handle it pulls the whole tailstock along the bed. And it's not bad, first try. I didn't spend an hour fiddling with it to get the contact even at all. I'm going to leave a little section for the holder to butt up against, so I can get some little chamfers, clean up the outside face, and I'll call this part done. Now onto the body of the holder. I'll face some 40mm or inch and a half ish stock, centre drill it and start whittling it down. I guess this part is just for aesthetics. I've seen these holders left at full thickness all the way along the barrel before, but I guess I'm all about these tapers today. So I'll cut another taper that will make up the back section of the head of the holder and then start drilling a hole as a pilot for our boring bar. I've always found these operations kind of boring. <laughs> uh... 
But bad jokes aside, I'm just taking this one out to be a slide fit with the round section of the Morse taper holder we made before. It's a frag over what I was chasing, but it feels okay. It's about 0.1 mil oversize, but I'll live. Then just to part it off, and time for dumb mistake number one. And a counter on the screen can't bode well for the rest of the project. This parting tool holder doesn't fit in my tool post, and apparently I forgot the right combination of shims I need to make it sit at center line. I have a new tool post and holders on the way, so hopefully this is the last project where I'll have to remember. I'm not sure how or why I didn't notice, but I let it run long enough to snap the parting bit. As far as the stock, I ended up having to karate chop it off. I definitely didn't use a bandsaw, but back to turning. Then I can face down the karate chop and poor parting marks, center drill and start stepping up through the drill bits. This is where the die will live and the little set that I've picked up are all just under one inch button dies. The largest die in the set is M12. And I did think far enough ahead that I'm drilling the deeper hole larger than the maximum size of the die can cut so the thread has somewhere to go. And for the last drill bit, it's the one she told you not to worry about. My big black 22mm reduced shank drill from Timu. It cuts like crap, but I'm going to be following it up with a boring bar anyways. I'm shooting for bang on 25mm for this one. And a little test fit. It seems I actually nailed this one. It's a little tight from all the burrs, but it doesn't have any play, which should keep it on centre. Weirdly, a drill bit seems to be really grippy when you jam a die nut in there full of swarf. A little lead-in chamfer on the inside, and this one can go into the mill. There's that counter again. I knew this hole didn't need to be ultra critical, so I zeroed the DRO off the inside of the vice jaws and in from the face. I also just zeroed off the centre drill. I never really do that. So when doing the math to find center, I had the measurement off my edge finder rather than the center drill in my head. And I'm not sure if you can tell from here, but they're not the same. I don't think it'll matter too much. I was only planning to use one grub screw to hold these dies in, as it's all that's on my tap holders. But another one of those things that I stared at for about half an hour before figuring out what actually went wrong. But I can still get a tap for an M5 grub screw. My dies have these little recesses on the sides, so holding it in place should be as simple as popping it into the holder and screwing the grub screw into place. Perfect. Well, perfect-ish. For the handle hole, I'll even use an edge finder so I don't trip myself up again and drill the hole for the handle. When boring the holes in from either end, I did leave a little material between the bores to drill the handle into. I'm not sure if it'd be a big deal, but I figured I didn't want the handle to intrude on the bore that went into the taper, and I didn't want it to fill with chips from the thread cutting operations up the front. Ugh, look how deliciously off center that grub screw hole is. But anyways, I'll use the end mill to cut a bit of a counter bore so the handle can lock in nice and flat. Run a tap through the hole and put this one aside for the minute. Now for the last part, the handle. I've got a little 12mm or half inch cold rolled chucked up and go through the usual steps. Ugh, not the counter. I had the lathe in reverse and destroyed that insert. Not the end of the world, but a dumb mistake nonetheless. Now I can take a skim pass off the bar and whittle down the area for a thread that's going to screw into the body. Then cut a little gutter with the parting tool that I'd figured out why it wasn't working. Hit it with a lead in chamfer and get this thread cut. It's the little things in life, but I haven't been able to cut threads in steel for ages and these new dies do it easy. I'm not sure why I didn't do this sooner. And that fits on pretty good. Just the industry standard check to make sure it won't fall off and this one can get parted off. It 
Excuse me, there's mess everywhere in here. Why didn't you tell me it looks so messy from this angle? Then I can bring the bar down to 11 mil to match a Rima. Well, it was supposed to be 12, but I took a little too much off in the cleanup pass. So I'm not gonna call this one a mistake, just a design change on the fly, or that's what I'm gonna tell myself. I need this one to be pretty bang on as I wanna press fit the handle. And that's pretty nice. 0.01 mil oversized to what my Rima cuts. That should be about perfect. Then a little chamfer to help lead into the brass and that can go to the side for the moment. I tossed and turned with what I wanted to do for this handle, but I arrived at something pretty classic and not too over the top. I'll start by drilling and reaming to suit the end of the handle we just turned. And a quick sanity check. Oh yeah, that should work pretty nice. It's just binding up on the edge of that chamfer. For the handle itself, I'll just turn the body down to dimension and then cut a 7-ish degree taper on the end. Slick. Now to shine it up a little because your shop made tools need to look like something out of a magazine and we can bring these together. I'm not sure retaining compound is going to do anything here, but it makes me feel better. And then using the tailstock, I'll slide the pieces together. But this is a bit tighter than I thought it would be. Not now, counter. It's not a mistake yet. Maybe it's a bit tight. Maybe there's a little air cushion trapped at the bottom of the hole. I'm not sure. And I don't really have appropriate pressing gear here. But I do have this. I would never use this press for anything accurate. Its main goal in life is to move fast and smush steel with no real accuracy. But because we're halfway there, I think I can bump it in. That almost went well enough for me to say I planned it that way. Come on, clean up that retaining compound. Much better. Now time to deal with the end of the handle. I just whizzed the excess off, gave it a really light round with a file, and went up through the scotch brights. Not much in the way of assembly here. Just load up a die and lock it in with a set screw and it's ready for some thread cutting action. It does a great job of holding the die nice and straight and that smooth handle is a pleasure to grab onto. Maybe it should have had some knurling but I'm not thinking this will need a huge amount of force, so hopefully grip isn't an issue in the future. That's pretty satisfying. I made a few mistakes on this one, but it turned out pretty cool and it had a lot of new stuff for me. Thanks for hanging around everyone. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. See you on the next one.